absurd. There's nothing there. Democrats claiming a cover-up. Mr. President, with all due respect, you're making a big mistake. And even top Republicans question Trump's decision. The FBI director completely caught off guard, fired for how he handled Hillary Clinton's email investigation. Comey defending those actions just a week ago. Tell me what you would do. It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election. Now calls for a special prosecutor to take over the Russia investigation. Democrats compare this to Watergate as President Trump prepares to nominate a new FBI director and meets with the Russian foreign minister this morning. Our entire team is breaking it all down. A special edition of GMA starts now. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. What a stunning decision from President Trump. Firing FBI Director James Comey, only the second time in American history a president has taken that step. We are covering all the fallout this morning from the White House to the Capitol to the FBI. The decision took Comey by surprise. He found out from TV on a recruiting trip to Los Angeles. He thought it was a joke. Right. At first, take a look at his plane. It was landing in D.C. just hours ago. This was after he got the news. Of course, we are covering every possible angle of this story. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is expected to soon name an interim FBI director to replace James Comey, and the president preparing to nominate a permanent replacement. The chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee is threatening to subpoena Trump campaign aides if they continue ignoring deadlines to turn over records of meetings with Russian officials prior to the election. And Russian's foreign minister is in Washington meeting with both President Trump and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. This expected uh, to discuss Syria and Ukraine. Yeah, some surprising timing right there. This is the highest ranking official, Russian official, the president has met with. Uh, it's the only event listed on the president's schedule today, but all day long, official Washington will be consumed by that decision to fire James Comey. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, starts us off with all the latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. This firing has stunned Washington, and it came without any warning whatsoever. Comey first heard the news on TV while he was speaking to FBI agents in Los Angeles. While Comey was in that meeting, a letter from the president was hand-delivered to FBI headquarters in Washington. That letter from the president was read to Comey over the phone. You are hereby terminated and removed from office effective immediately. The president wrote, you are not able to effectively lead the bureau. The president also addressed the FBI investigation into Russian meddling in the election. I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under investigation. The official reasonings for the firing were outlined in a letter from the deputy attorney general, who wrote that Comey grossly mishandled the Hillary Clinton email investigation, saying, among other things, that this July 2016 press conference exonerating Clinton should never have happened. No charges are appropriate in this case. The deputy attorney general says Comey was wrong to usurp the attorney general's authority by announcing that there would be no charges and then going on to criticize Mrs. Clinton anyway. It's a textbook example of what federal prosecutors and agents are taught not to do, he wrote. Hours before news of the firing broke, a hint from the White House press secretary, Sean Spicer. Does the president still have confidence, full confidence in FBI Director James Comey? I have no reason to believe. I haven't asked him. So I, I don't, I have not asked the president since the last time we spoke about this. And the last time you spoke about it, you said he did have confidence, but you're not sure to say that again now? Well, I, I don't, in light of what you're telling me, I don't want to start speaking on behalf of the president without speaking to him first. On Capitol Hill, Democrats are crying foul. They fired Sally Yates. They fired Preet Bharara. And now they fired Director Comey, the very man leading the investigation. This does not seem to be a coincidence. The we top Democrat in the Senate says Trump's move worse. could be an attempt to undermine the investigation into Russia's involvement in the election. This is part of a deeply troubling pattern from the Trump administration. And Senator Richard Burr, the Republican in charge of the Senate investigation into Russia's meddling in the election, issued a statement last night saying, quote, I am troubled by the timing and reasoning of Director Comey's termination. His dismissal further confuses an already difficult investigation by the committee. 
And Senator Burr is not the only Republican expressing concerns this morning. John McCain says he is disappointed by the firing. Senator Ben Sass issued a statement saying the timing of this firing is very troubling. And Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona, Republican, said, I've spent the last several hours trying to find an acceptable rationale for the timing of Comey's firing. I just can't do it. George? John, we have not heard from the Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell and the Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, has asked all Democrats to go to the Senate this morning to go en masse to confront Senator McConnell and hear what he has to say. Uh, sure, sure, sure does, and they're going to be calling for a special prosecutor in this case. The president is responding to Senator Schumer, issuing a tweet late last night saying, Crying Chuck Schumer stated recently, I do not have confidence in him, James Comey, any longer. Then acts so indignant. Hashtag drain the swamp. Yeah, Democrats have had a lot of complaints about Comey as well. Meantime, that uh, item on the president's schedule today meeting with the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. Yeah, this is something else. Uh, you know, it's not unusual for the Russian foreign minister when he's in Washington meeting with the Secretary of State to also come by for a meeting with the president. That's happened under many, many presidents. But, George, it is striking that that is the only thing on President Trump's public schedule today, a meeting with the Russian foreign minister. Yeah, that is it, the only he, thing on the public schedule. He's had a light public schedule for several days. John Carl, thanks very much. And there's still so many questions about what happens next for James Comey and the FBI. The search now on for a new director. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Pierre. Good morning, Robin. I spoke to someone close to Comey last night who said the director was caught flat-footed, stunned. No one saw this coming. Comey had only recently talked about serving out the rest of his 10-year term, which was supposed to end in 2023. But in an instant, one of the most dominant figures in Washington is out. James Comey was perhaps the most powerful FBI director since J. Edgar Hoover and the most controversial, at the center of a political firestorm since the moment he held that unusual press conference last July to announce that charges would not be brought against then-presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in connection with that email scandal. Despite the fact that no charges were filed, Comey issued a sharp rebuke. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. Republicans and then-candidate Trump cried foul that there were no formal charges. It's so sad that our system is, in fact, rigged. It's totally rigged, okay? It's corrupt, it's rigged, it's disgraceful. But then in October, this time only 11 days before the election, Comey dominated the headlines again, disclosing that he was reigniting the investigation after new emails turned up on a laptop of Anthony Weiner, husband of Clinton aide Uma Abedin. Now Trump praising the FBI director, and it was Democrats who were outraged, fearing that Comey was injecting himself into the campaign at the last moment, only to announce just 48 hours before Election Day that nothing of consequence had been found. Just last week, Comey defending his actions in what he described as a gut-wrenching decision. Tell me what you would do. It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election. The Justice Department Inspector General was already investigating Comey's controversial handling of those Clinton emails when Attorney General Sessions and the new Deputy Attorney General decided they could not wait for the results of that probe and concluded that Comey's decisions had broken with department guidelines and tradition. The acting director of the FBI is now Andrew McCabe, until recently Comey's top deputy. The White House will now launch a search for a new director who will be hand-picked by the president. Comey's firing is not without controversy. Sessions had recused himself from any investigations regarding the 2016 election. That includes the Russia probe. And now Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, the top prosecutor overseeing the Russia case, has fired the FBI director who is leading that probe, Robin. And Andrew McCabe is now the new acting director. What do we know about him? McCabe is a veteran agent of roughly 20 years' experience. He worked corruption and terror cases in matters of national security. He's been the subject, subject of some controversy himself after it was disclosed that his wife received financial support from close Clinton ally Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe when she ran for office in Virginia. McCabe's actions involving the Clinton email investigation are part of a Justice Department Inspector General review, too, Robin. All right, Pierre. Thank you, George. Okay, Robin, we're going to bring in Senator Tim Kaine right now. Of course, he was Hillary Clinton's running mate last year. Now, member of the Senate Foreign Relations and Armed Services Committee, Senator Kane, thank you for joining us this morning. You've heard the administration's rationale for firing James Comey. Do you buy it? Uh, no, George, I don't. Um, this is a firing that is an attempt to obstruct the investigation uh, into ties between Russia and the Trump campaign, and I'll tell you why I strongly believe that. There's a pattern. 
um, Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates went to the White House and said General Flynn was compromised by and lying about Russia, and then she was fired. When Flynn's ties with Russia were finally made available to the public, he got fired. Jeff Sessions was caught misleading the Senate Judiciary Committee about his ties with Russia. He had to recuse himself. And now the FBI director, in the middle of an investigation into the Trump ties with Russia, gets fired in a most unusual matter. There's a pattern here. There's more to come. And we need a special prosecutor. Senator Kane, it sounds like you just accused the president of obstructing justice. Um, the president's letter is very telling, George, um, because it's the president that made this firing decision, not anybody else. And in the letter, he says, look, I have to let you go. But he inserts this thing like a bad poker player whose facial expression tell you, tells you what kind of hand they have. Thank you so much for telling me three times I'm not the subject of an investigation into Russia. That is a tell. That shows that we have a deeply insecure president who understands that the noose is tightening because of this Russia investigation. And that's why I believe he has let Jim Comey go. Is he obstructing justice? Um, I think that there is an effort to stop this investigation in its tracks that the president is engaged in along with other members of his team and that's what explains why all these unusual personnel actions are happening. The only thing that unifies them is that they're all about the ties between Russia and the Trump team. You, you cited the president's letter. He says he was told on three separate occasions that he is not under investigation. To your knowledge, has Mr. Comey said that to the Senate? No, I have no knowledge of that, whether that is in fact true or not. Of course, um, uh, Mr. Comey would be the one who could verify that, but it was clear in his testimony before the Senate uh, in the last two weeks that there is an active and ongoing investigation into ties between the Trump campaign, transition, and administration with Russia, and that investigation has been going on since last summer. The New York Times is reporting that Attorney General Sessions was charged with coming up with reasons to fire Comey. Was it appropriate for him to be involved? Uh, it wasn't appropriate. He had to recuse himself from matters with respect to the Russia investigation. Um, and he was forced to do that again because he was caught misleading the Senate Judiciary Committee about his own ties with Russia during the campaign. The fact that he ends up uh, being involved in this decision to fire uh, goes against that recusal. But again, let's not uh, you know, fool ourselves. This was a, was a decision made by the president. Others might have been uh, asked to come up with reasons, but this wasn't Jeff Sessions' decision. It wasn't Rod Rosenstein's decision. But, this is Donald Trump's decision. But Senator decision. Kane, you know, the, the, the Justice Department memorandum does, does echo many of the criticism that you and other Democrats have made of James Comey. Just last week, you said Comey's decision to publicly reopen the Clinton investigation will go down as probably the lowest moment in the history of the FBI. So is there some justification for removing him? I, what I said was uh, next to the wiretapping of MLK, that was the lowest moment, but I think this was the second lowest moment. Look, I have been critical of Jim Comey, but that's why the FBI director gets a 10-year te uh, term. I didn't say he should be fired. The 10-year term is to insulate an FBI director from making people mad, from political pressure, from Congress, or from the president. So yeah, I've been critical, but he has a 10-year term so he can do his job free from political interference. And the president has interfered as part of a pattern because he's nervous about this Russian Finally, Senator, will you and other Democrats try to block a replacement for James Comey until a special prosecutor is named? Well, look, the, the, the key thing is, as a member of the Senate who will be voting on any replacement, I can guarantee you this, anybody nominated to be in this position is going to get the most searching review by the United States Senate probably that any nominee has ever gotten. And that's appropriate because we want to make sure that this person will follow this investigation wherever it leads. It's premature to talk about how we might handle it. Our goal would not be to block anybody, but to ensure that the FBI director is not going to be afraid of a president who's trying to squash an investigation. Senator Kane, thanks for your time this morning. And George, thanks so much. As we just heard from Senator Kane, there are major questions about how James Comey's firing will impact the investigation into Russian meddling in the U.S. election. Both Republican and Democrat lawmakers are now calling for an independent body to investigate. Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, is here with those details. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, Robin. The FBI director was fired just as the FBI's Russian investigation was at a critical juncture. And this morning, there are growing calls for a special prosecutor to take over an investigation that was clearly about to reach into the White House. 
with the FBI's Russian investigation finally picking up speed after almost a year. Senior FBI officials say this morning the timing of James Comey's firing stinks, with Democrats calling for a special prosecutor. The inescapable conclusion from the circumstantial evidence here is the president wanted to stop or stifle this investigation. Officials tell ABC News that the FBI is increasingly focused on Trump's former national security advisor, General Mike Flynn, his former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, his former foreign policy advisor, Carter Page, and longtime Trump friend, Roger Stone. All have denied any wrongdoing. But sure, Comey's testimony last I, week I was hardly reassuring to the Trump camp. We're conducting an investigation to understand whether there was any coordination between Ru the Russian efforts and anybody associated with the Trump campaign. Now, some fear a new director at the FBI, appointed by President Trump, could find subtle ways to undercut or even end the investigation. A new director could come in and ask that an inspection or review of the case be done. And that review could cause the case to slow down. It may be closed. Just two days ago, the president posted this on Twitter. The Russia-Trump collusion story is a total hoax. When will this taxpayer-funded charade end? And last night on Fox, White House aide Sarah Huckabee Sanders said the FBI investigation should be shut down. My gosh, Tucker, when are they going to let that go? It's been going on for nearly a year. Frankly, it's kind of getting absurd. There's nothing there. There has been some praise for the president's actions. His former foreign policy advisor, Carter Page, who is one of the targets of the investigation, said this morning he is encouraged that President Trump dismiss Comey and hopes that it will bring to an end an investigation into what he calls the false allegations about Russia. Robert okay, Bernard, thanks. Let's bring in Dan Abrams right now and Cookie Roberts as well. And, and Dan, this, everybody's trying to wrap their heads uh, around this. We just heard from Carter Page right there, but Senator Tim Kaine saying flat out this is an attempt to block the investigation into Russia. And, and now the question is what happens now? Uh, and you hear a lot of people saying, well, it's time for a special prosecutor. Uh, the problem there is that typically a special prosecutor would be appointed by the attorney general. In this case, that's not going to happen. He may say he's even recused from that decision. Then it goes to the deputy attorney general. It's pretty clear the deputy attorney general isn't going to order a special prosecutor. So then the question becomes, can Congress put enough pressure um, on the administration to appoint a special counsel? And that's going to be a political decision. Um, it seems unlikely at this point that, that something like that's going to happen. Um, but that's the way it would uh, occur. So it's not really a purely legal question. In the end, it becomes a political one. In some ways, uncharted territory. And Koki is our resident historian. Put this into context for us, because some are comparing this to Watergate. Well, uh, it's understandable that people are co comparing it to Watergate because, of course, what happened there is that President Nixon fired the special prosecutor because he was getting too close. And, uh, and here we have the president firing the head of the FBI and, and the president's people saying it's time to shut down this very important investigation as to whether the Kremlin interfered in our election. And so this is something that uh, is, is going to resonate in Washington for a long time to come. We have more on this coming up. We've got to go to quick, quickly now to Ginger. Yeah, and at least eight reported tornadoes. New Mexico, that was Santa Fe. Lots of hail, and now this threat moves north and east today. Let's go ahead and get to your stormy cities, brought to you by Edward Jones. Hello. Hi, it's Anne from Edward Jones. I'm glad I caught you. Well, I'm just leaving the office, so for once I've got plenty of time. What's going on? So, those financial regulations being talked about? They could affect your accounts. Mm -hmm. So let's get together and talk and make sure everything's clear. Thanks. Yeah, that would be great. We've grown to over $900 billion in assets under care by being proactive, not reactive. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Some early day sunshine and late day high clouds, but today is still going to be the nicest day out of the week with temperatures today in the lower 70s across the area. Next time we're as warm, it's not going to be until Sunday, Mother's Day. Now we're going to be tracking some rain. There's a chance on Thursday, mainly afternoon, another chance on Friday and especially Friday late through Saturday morning. Maybe a washout, but 59 the high on Saturday we take on DC United, 72 for Mother's Day looking dry and awfully nice. Of course, have more on the firing of James Comey, but coming up, nuclear emergency, a terrifying scare 
at the largest nuclear waste facility in the country. What caused this tunnel to collapse, and should the public be concerned? And new fallout at Penn State after that student tragedy died at a fraternity party. We're going to have what the 911 call reveals.